praise the Lord. Uh, this is a great week. We are thankful to God again for this day. We want to first of all appreciate so much the people behind the cameras who make this work beautiful and who make this work a success so that you are able to listen and to be blessed. We are here again and uh, we would like to talk about the armor of God as our theme for this week. We are getting a scripture from the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verses 10 to 13. And this is what the Bible says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God, so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against authorities, against the powers, of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on the full <coughs> armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand. Hallelujah. Um, we are looking at the armor of God this week. Uh, maybe just to help us understand what an armor means. An armor is simply a covering worn as a defense against any weapons of war. Um, the armor of God reminds us that we are soldiers of Christ and we are in a battlefield. The armor contains, the armor we are talking about here contains six pieces. We have the breastplate of righteousness, we have the belt of truth, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, the shoes of the gospel, and the shield of faith. We shall be looking at each one of these pieces individually as we get along this week. One thing we need to remember is that this armor does not contain anything that protects the back, meaning that we are not supposed to show the enemy our backs. Um, that is no retreat, no surrender. So as we get forward, as we battle, we are not supposed to retreat, neither are we supposed to surrender. Paul begins by saying, or ends by actually saying, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Uh, and then he goes ahead to talk about the armor, as she has described to us the armor. As believers, Paul gives us a message that thrusts us straight away to the knowledge that we are in a battle. I know that a lot of people don't like to fight. They like to keep their peace. Paul has a message of war. And so that's what we're going to use this week to talk about the armor. And so from scripture, by now all of us as believers should know that we have an enemy. And his name is Satan. In fact, he has over 174 uh, titles or names in scripture. But meaning the same, referring to the same enemy. Jesus called him a thief. In John 10, 10, he says he cannot come. The thief comes not except to steal, kill, and destroy. Uh, other versions just call him the enemy. Uh, 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 others call him the, the prince of the powers of darkness. So, child of God, it, it's good to know you have an enemy. I think one thing that an enemy will enjoy is to be fighting you or looking to destroy you and you ignore him or think he's not around. You know, I, I, I also believe it is so fatal for you to be right in the middle of a battleground and not even know that actually you're in the middle of the battleground. So we bring this message to you this week to just let you know that whether you like it or you don't like it, as long as Jesus is your Lord, Satan is your enemy. So the Bible says, put on the whole armor. That is very important for us to note, not just part of the armor, the whole armor. And it goes ahead to say so that you may be able to stand. It means if you don't have the armor or you just have part of it, then you're vulnerable. Uh, as we look at it, you'll get to know that actually the whole front of, the, of a fighter is covered by this armor. Now, I am not trying to lift the profile of the devil, but just to bring to your attention that the one that you're coming against is not a simple person. But there is a good news. There is good news about it all. We are not fighting for victory. We are actually fighting in victory. Christ won for us a resounding victory. So we're just 
fighting to take our place in Christ, to take our place that was already purchased. We will be able to delve into all this as the days go by. May God bless you as you prepare. First of all, as you get to know you have an enemy, but also then as you prepare to know how to fight this vicious enemy. God bless you.